if I just unselect that, that document and we go here and we're going to go to manage views and this is going to drop us into the settings area so if we click on version settings this is the version settings panel for the entire list and there are a number of key features here and they work in combination together and you can have a, there are a variety of combinations this escalates up if you like the functionality of the document management library and version control and how it all works together so just very quickly I'll, I'll talk through each one and then we'll look at how some of this works so the first one here that we've got is require content approval for submitting items so if you check this any item that is submitted back i.e you've checked it out you're checking it back in as an example will require approval before it becomes a public document and we'll talk more about what a public document is shortly but but this runs an approval system that requires those documents to be approved here we have three radio buttons if we chop check the top one what that means is there will be no version control so you will be saving documents and you won't get that version incrementation that we saw when we saved the last document um, so that's worth noting this is the option that we had switched on which is where major versions and we saw that it went from you know, 10 11 12 13 14 so these are major versions um, and it was saving those major versions and this option is the really the highest option which is create major and minor draft versions so the difference between a major version and a minor version a minor version will start 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4. A major version will start 10, 11, 12, 13. The difference between a major and a minor version, apart from the numbering and the incremental numbering system, is that a major version is classed as a published version. A minor version is classed as a draft and is not classed as published inside SharePoint's document library. Now, right at this moment in time, that really doesn't mean anything to you. But as we go further down, I'm going to explain and you're going to start to see how that really impacts and works. Because as you begin to publish documents, what that really means is it becomes available to more people to view, more people to edit, more people to do any sort of functionality that you've allocated to them, providing that the, that document version is in a published state and you can have a a document at 14 as a published state and then you can have somebody making changes at 14.1 14.2 14.3 and that document it's still the same document but with those iterations those changes on it but they will be in draft so the people won't be able to see the forward versions they will only be able to see the major version that you've published so what that means is you can still have a document published still be working on it and updating it yet the older version will still be available for consumption by people in your organization and I think that's really powerful and when you start to see that really work together uh, it becomes extremely powerful uh, and useful especially when you start using things like the content search web part where it starts surfacing those documents and data to people in different streams and in different dashboards and in different search um, interfaces. So let's have a look what these mean. These, this, this is this checkbox works uh, with this radio button, and, and as you go through these, notice as I click this one, the bottom one gets grayed out. So, so these work in different combinations. This first one talks about keeping the following uh, number of major versions. So if I put in there 500 as an example, it will keep. 500 versions of major versions of a document uh, in the in the history in the version history um, that we can go back um, and um, pull that back so it will, so it will store 500 versions of each document so if you had 10 documents and you'd made 500 major changes it would stay save 500 
major versions of each document providing you've made 500 major changes. And this at the bottom here, again, is the same thing. This is draft, so it will keep 500 drafts of, um, of, a, of a document. So, so that's the minor changes. Now, one thing to remember here is this applies to every single document you ever load up then to this document library. And remember, this only applies to this specific document library. And obviously, this, this requires that you have enough resources, enough hard drive space available in your farm to be able to manage that. So these numbers may be slightly less depending on uh, the resources available to you um, in, in your farm. So this next component, who should see draft items in this library? Now remember, minor versions, saved versions, are drafts. So if you haven't checked this, if you're at this level here on this radio button, this, this will not be applicable and it won't work. But as you come down and you allow minor versions to be implemented, this then comes into play and says, OK, if, if you save a document and it's a minor version, who, who should be able to see that? So we've got any user has read items, only users who can edit items, only users who can approve items, and the author of the item. So instead of having to manage the permissions in this particular document library, what you can do here is you can allow groups to have access to this document library and then apply these, these rules on draft items against those permission sets of those users. So if you want your draft versions to be very secure and you don't want many people to see it, you would check this bottom option. And what's interesting is you can't check this bottom option until the approved section has been allowed. So you need to, and content approval is selected, and then this bottom option is available, which states only users who can approve items. Clearly. Uh, that's logical because if you don't require things to be approved then surely users who can approve items would, would not be available because nobody can approve items because it hasn't been selected so just if, if you've got this uh, this checked on no obviously you won't be able to select the bottom option so this is at this stage only obviously only people that can approve and the author of the item can actually see the document um, as you move up and you, and draft items uh, become available uh, as you move move up. Obviously, the uh, draft items become available to more people to see. And then we've got this bottom up op option, and this is quite important. Remember, we talked about the check in, check out. If you check out a document, you have the ability to comment. Now, in this scenario here, required documents to be checked out before they can be edited. What this is saying is, you cannot edit a document unless you check it out. So let's let's select that. So this is going to force users to have to check out that document, which means they're going to get that option to fill in that comment as they um, as they edit that document. So contents approved, drafts are on, only users who can approve items are going to be able to see a document when it gets approved, and every document has to be checked out now in order to um, to edit that document. So let's go and see what that looks like. Let's click OK. So let's take a look at our document here. What happens if I click Edit? I'm going to edit this document. Edit in browser. We get this warning now that says check out this document before editing it online. So Straight away, we've said that documents need to be checked out. We didn't check it out. So if I now click this, it's only going to open in read only. So what we're going to have to do from here is we need to go back. And what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take a look at that document. We're going to need to click the ellipsis. And we're going to need to check out that document. So we've now checked it out and we get this. So let's... Let's go and make a quick change. Now we edit this document. The document now has been opened up.
And if we now go back to the library, we notice that we start getting this incremental version here. Now let me just refresh this because sometimes it doesn't always, let's say 14.1. So we've moved up. Now if I just edit that document one more time, And I go back. Okay, so we're here and we're on 14.1. So let's see what happens now if I check that document back in. So it says here, how do I now want to save this? What kind of version? If I save it as 14.1, it'll be a draft version. If I save it as 15, it'll be a published version. Also, when I check it back in, do I want to retain the checkout or not? So if it's checked out, people won't be able to see the changes that I've made. So if I say, yes, OK, I want to retain my checkout, and I say, um, if we now update this, click OK, what we see is it moves up to the next version, 14.2. We get our comments. Now across here, what we're looking for is this column here that says um, approval status. And what this says is that this document is in draft mode because it hasn't been approved. Now, if I come back here and I say, okay, um, I could discard the checkout. So if we discard the checkout, this is going to stop us from checking out this document. So it's going to check it back in. So let's do that. So discard the checkout. When we do that, it drops us back a version because we didn't check in the last change that we made. That but we did, but the, but we moved it up to fourteen point two when we added in the other change. So there were no changes that were made. It was just ready to save when when we made that next change. So. We've now checked that back in, and if we click this ellipsis, we now have these two options, check out or publish. So let's see what happens if I publish this. We get comments. Um, and we click OK. So what has happened now is the version is at 14.1 and if we come across here we'll find that the approval status is now moved to pending so it went from draft to pending and the reason it did that is because we had this document in draft and in order for it to be a fully published document this version needs to increase um, to, to a full number so it would be 15 so if we now check this ellipsis, we go to more, um, and we now click this approve and reject. We get this status option, we can approve it, we can reject it, or it can be uh, pending, uh, which is the item will remain visible to its creator and all users who can see draft items. So that just explains to you where we are at the moment. So. When we moved from the draft version to pending, actually, we didn't. Ch nothing changed. Only the person who created it and people who could see the draft could see it. Well, when it was in draft mode, that was still the case anyway. So, as I said, it it moved it up because it was in a draft state and it wasn't a full published version. So, if we now click approved and let's say uh, approve. Group changes and we click OK. What we should see now as this moves up is we move up to 15, and what we should also see is the status move to approved. And what that means is when it moves to approved, the 
people that can see this document changes. It changes from that draft status where only a select few people could see it to people that have rights to read this document um, in this library can read can read this document because it is now in an approved state. So this is just outlined really some of the key steps, version control steps, some of the settings that are available and some of the complexities because it is complex. You won't be able to pick this up straight away and run with it. It does take a bit of understanding. You do need to understand the different statuses and you do need to understand why. Why would you want to do these things? And as you implement some of this functionality, it does make it more complicated. So you really need to understand the purpose of this document library because you may have more than one document library based on the number of documents and the types of documents that you're storing and you need to understand who may be working with these documents and what what functionality you really need to put in place because you don't need this complexity if the functionality isn't required. I'm now going to post a new video and we're going to, I'm going to take you through a further example of this with two users so we can really see all of this functionality in action with two users with different permissions um, and hopefully that will that will help to crystallize and and, and uh, allow you to completely grasp how this would work in an organization and collaboratively if you've enjoyed this video uh, please subscribe to the channel there'll be many many more videos um, being posted and please join me in the next video. Thank you for watching.